Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Vivian. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and then we create a themed burger based on that episode. This week we're talking about Season 2, Episode 5, Food Truckin'. This episode was written by Lizzie Molyneux and Wendy Molyneux. I really want to say Molyneux, but it's probably not how they say their name. (laughs) That's the French in you. Yeah. This episode was directed by Bernard Derriman, and this episode aired April 15th, 2012. The store next door was That's Improbable Improv Theater. (laughs) Cute. And the exterminator van was Mice Girls. Again, cute. (laughs) We had a couple burgers of the day. We had a Chorizo Your Own Adventure Burger. I actually really like that one. I think that's a clever name, Mm -hmm. and I think it's really cute. Yeah. We have Where Have You Been All My Life, and it comes with baked beans. It's not really much of wordplay, but it's still fun. Yeah, it's cute. I like it. And... I believe this is a mistake in this episode because there's actually a third burger, but it shouldn't be there. It's in the continuity error. There's one shot where it's the Where Have You Been All My Life or the Churries Are Your Own Adventure. I don't remember which one. And then the next shot, it's this. Uh, What's the Worcestershire That Could Happen burger? So I'm not sure whether they had that and just forgot to take it out or, or what was going on, but... Yeah, yeah. maybe they planned to have that burger and then they changed it to something else. It's yeah. very possible. I like that name, though. Yeah. That's good. And it's hard really, to say. Yes, true. Um, but I like the idea of what's the worst that could happen, because this episode's kind of just, well, what's the worst that could happen if I get a food truck? Mm-hmm. And apparently this is the worst yeah. thing that could happen. I guess they could have probably blown up in the truck. That would have been the worst thing that could happen, but... Spoiler alert, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> they live. In this episode, Paul F. Topkins is back as Randy Watkins, and Megan Mullally, who we all know as Linda's sister Gail, is in this episode as Tabitha Johansson, the singer at the food festival. Oh, so good. So good. I always thought it was her, but I didn't check to see, Mm -hmm. so I'm glad I was right. And if you don't remember Randy, he was in season one, episode two, I believe, Sacred Cow. Yes. And he was the documentary filmmaker i like him better in this episode he's a lot kinder yeah just before we get started i've got a little bit of trivia and we're gonna talk about the food trucks that we see in this episode so first of all the Lollapalooza festival is a reference to Lollapalooza, a popular annual music festival of course and the food trucks that we see in this episode or that are mentioned we have quite a list of them and they're all great puns Yes. We have Something to Taco About, Walk of Shame, Schindler's Fish, Ode to Soy, Stop Drop Egg Roll, Genghis Flan, Ain't Muffin to It, Fudge Judy, Nan Consensual. (laughs) That one's terrible. It's so bad. (laughs) Taquito is Cheap, which I'm guessing is talk is cheap, but that's kind of a stretch. Uh, we have Talk to the Ham, Jeepers Crepers, Here's Looking at You, Squid. <laughs> that one's so I good. like that one. That's a good one. Sherlock Scones, Roast Busters, Spaghet About It, <laughs> I Am Clam, Justice of the Quiche, Total Eclipse of the Tart, <laughs> Dentist Rick's Fish Sticks, <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a weird name. That one's crazy. I would not want to buy fish from that truck. And our last one is You Dim Some, You Lose Some. So that that's, that's cute. Yeah. I like all these names. They're I think so they're good. fantastic. I really wonder how they come up with all these. If they just kind of sit at this big table and all the writers are there and they just throw these things out, or if they have to, you know, ask their friends or husbands or wives, like, can you think of a good food truck name? Have you seen one that looks funny out there jeepers crepers is great there's some really good and the font that they used for that is pretty much the same font that they used for the movie jeepers creepers right that's it's perfect Mm -hmm. all right so let's get started food trucks have invaded wonder wharf bob despises the growing trend because he doesn't understand it and thinks it's stupid his old nemesis randy the documentary maker from season one suggests bob get his own food truck 
I really like the pose that the kids do when Bob catches them looking mm-hmm. at the window. They're all kind of like doing that casual, but not even a little bit casual pose. So you've got Jean leaning over one of the seats and you've got Tina looking up. Oh no, and you've got and you've got Louise looking at the ceiling with her binoculars, binoculars and Tina's just doing this like weird robot move. Oh, it's great. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. Makes me laugh. It's another thing that Bob doesn't like. We're getting a lot of these things. Like in season one, we had Lobster Fest. Yep. Bob just hated it. And now we have food trucks, which Bob just hates. Why do you think Bob hates food trucks? Because Lobster Fest made sense. Like it was something that he couldn't participate in, right? Mm -hmm. So he felt excluded and thus didn't care for it. But food trucks isn't exactly a thing that he's excluded from. I think it's partially because he didn't come up with it or he isn't partaking in it. Okay. So he feels like it's catching on and he's frustrated that it's a thing. So he just tells himself to hate it. Mm, okay. Because he doesn't seem to hate the food trucks as soon as he starts doing it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like somebody hating a movie before they've seen it. Okay. And then just being really stubborn. Like Bob doesn't like them because they're popular or Bob doesn't like them because... I don't know. I, I He's just a stubborn guy, I think. Yeah, he's made up his opinion before he's actually bought anything from a food truck or talked to anyone that owns a food truck. He just makes all these assumptions. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. I am getting kind of tired of that twist sound effect thing. The really loud... Uh, what kind of noise is that? Like a mixture of like a klaxon, alarm... Um, jump scare sound almost. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. It kind of grates on my ears now that I've been tuned to listen to it. It's just frustrating and I don't think it's necessary. Because hmm. it's, it's, it doesn't go away. Hmm. It stays up until, you know, present season. They use it all the time. That's okay. been their, that's their thing. Okay, I think it's going to annoy me more (laughs) as we continue. I'm just going to be like, really? Don't rely on that anymore. It's not good. (laughs) Um, As much as Bob is super cranky at the beginning of this episode, and I don't really sympathize, I do like when he's frustrated with Randy and he says, well, you can't take two words and make one stupider word (laughs) when Randy's talking about his bluey and his blue mirror and oh, goodness. I would I would be saying the same thing to Randy. So mm-hmm. in his effort to fight back, Bob dips into Jean's college fund and buys an old food truck. Bob leaves Linda to look after the restaurant, but she soon grows bored and joins the family on the road. They head to Lollapafoodza, a big food truck festival, in order to win a big cash prize. It's kinda nice to know that Bob and Linda actually have college funds for their kids. Like we yeah, know that, that they're struggling financially. That surprised me. Yeah? Yeah. Because that means that every single time he's late with his rent and Mr. Fish Odor's threatening to close the restaurant, he has not dipped into that college fund. He's stayed true and said, you know, your my kid's education is more important than my livelihood. Which is kind of backwards. A little bit, but, but it's admirable. It's still kind of sweet. Yeah. And I do like that Gene's like, well, I'm not going to use it, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I am surprised that anyone buys food from Bob's truck because it looks really sketchy. I mean, it's breaking down. It has dings all over the place. One of the lights on the front is bashed in. It looks dirty. And then the name that they have on it, like Linda says this whole, oh, we're going to give it a makeover. But really that makeover looks like Gene painted on the name Bob's Burgers badly. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised it's not a spelling mistake. But it looks really sketchy. I don't think I would buy food from that truck. That just means that it's been through some stuff. It's better because it looks worse. Really? Like a good book. It's been read a whole lot. It's just a little raggedy. No, you're not going to buy that? No. Yeah, neither would I. It looks like (laughs) crap. It's got rust all over it. Hugo would probably freak out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they could have had Hugo come in and do this whole food safety thing, but I'm kind of glad they went in a different direction. Yeah, we've had the the whole restaurant is violating health codes before, so 
your favorite line in this episode and I think my favorite line in this episode are one and the same. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Gene asks Bob why he smells. Yeah, why his feet smell like chili. Mm-hmm. And it's he, Bob says it's because I don't wash. And Gene responds, but do you season? <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. It's so gross because, I mean, we hear all this gross stuff about Bob all the time, that he's like a sweaty guy, he's very moist, um, that he's hairy and he doesn't bathe enough and... That's just another thing. I wouldn't want to buy food from a guy who smells like armpits and who looks like he hasn't taken a shower in a few days. Yeah. But then Gene's line makes up for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. It's the perfect response. And then we further humiliate Bob when the kids give each other code names and Bob ends up being back hair. And Are of you course, sure it's Bob being back here? Yeah, it's definitely Bob being back here. And Louise is the jackal, mm-hmm. not Bob. Of course. So, Jason, if we had code names, what do you think they would be? Uh, I would be Slick Rick. What? That says, what? What? Huh? Why Slick Rick? Fine. I'd be Diggity Dog. You'd be J Dog. You'd be Papa J, and you know it. Oh, man. <laughs> Papa J reporting for duty. Oh, Slick Rick? I don't know. It (laughs) sounded cool. (laughs) I guess it just makes you think of Rick and Morty. You'd be V-Patrol. Oh my god. V-Patrol? That's terrible. Vode name V. No. (laughs) Wait, honestly, can you think of a codename for me? Okay, what would you be? I've already given you codenames. You didn't like them. Oh, I don't know. I'm never good with code names. Indecisive I'd be Andy? Veg- no, I'd be Veggie Burger. Uh, you'd <laughs> no. be Veggie V. No, I'd be Veggie Burger. That mm. would be my code name. No, Veggie V. No. Oh. <laughs> you'd be Papa J Patty. We'd have burger code names. We'd have burger code names, okay. Yeah. I don't really get why Linda is making this argument that if they drive around, they're stealing everyone else's customers. Because I understand that the reason they started was to get their business back because mm-hmm. the other food trucks were stealing their customers. But if they're going to places like, like a assisted flea living care or the flea market or Lollapafoodza, they're not really stealing other people's customers. They're just participating. Right. You know? And if they're going around town, they're not going to be camped out in front of one particular restaurant for an entire week stealing exactly. their customers. And that's really the point of a food truck is to travel around and get new customers here and there. So So Linda doesn't really get it. No, I don't think so. I think maybe she's just pointing out that for Bob, it's no longer about stealing his customers back. It's about making money. Right. His motives have changed. Yes. And I do like their Chowster updates because they're kind of like a little game. It's like you have to figure it out. You have to, like, unpack the little clue about where they're going to be today because they have little updates like, we're grinding at the game. So, of course, they're at the baseball field, which we saw in... Torpedo? Yes. Yes. Season 1, episode 13, I think. And then they have get a meal at the wheel. So, they're right in front of the Ferris wheel at Wonder Wharf. Mm -hmm. And then medium rare outside assisted living care, which is cute. All right, let's continue. At the festival, Bob tasks the kids to give out samples and write updates on Chowster. Louise and Jean slam all the other food trucks, and Tina lies about the burgers. When Bob wins the prize for best food truck, the other food truckers call him out for being a fraud. The family gets chased by an angry mob back to their truck. What do you think of Lollapafoodza? Would you go to a festival oh, absolutely. like this? It's like, it's like Chili Fest or Rib Fest. It's just... They've added entertainment. It's like Lobster Fest. Exactly. Yeah. So there's all sorts of great delicious foods. You've got bands performing. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. And you have a big variety of foods like Chili Fest and Rib Fest and Lobster Fest. It's all focused around one thing. But the types of food trucks that we're seeing, there's mm-hmm. a really big Huge variety. Huge variety. Yeah. You've got burgers. You've got squid. You've got crepes. All kinds of stuff. So I would definitely go to one of these. Mm-hmm. And... In fact, I've been to a few, like, 
vegetarian food fests before where there are lots of food trucks and lots of different vendors who sell all kinds of stuff. And it's really fun to go to those and just try some new food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I am a little surprised in a way that Bob's truck did win. Um, Because it's just burgers. Yeah, exactly. And, And that's what people are calling him out for, saying that that's not that creative. And while... It's not very creative. I agree there. Like, he's still doing a good job. His burgers are still good. Mm -hmm. But I'm surprised that people aren't still trying the other places. Despite despite the Chowster reviews. Despite the Chowster reviews. Okay. Yeah, because I think, like, one bad review wouldn't steer me away from a place. Mm -hmm. Steer me right, burger. Oh, my gosh. You did like that one, didn't you? I do like Tina's story this episode. Yeah. Becoming Dina. Mm-hmm. A little bit rebellious. I do like Tina when she's talking to the hipster who says, does it pair well with an IPA? And of course, Tina has no idea what an IPA is. Um, Tina says it pairs well with all letters. IPA, CSI, PTA, IRS, HMO, OMG. <laughs> all of those. I think they're great. Oh, well, it's fantastic. Tina is very cute this episode. Except for at the end, but that's fine. What do you mean, except at the end? What does she do? I don't want to die a virgin. And then the other guy, and then Randy says, me neither. And then she says, well, that gives me an idea. Oh, yeah, "Eh." no. It's a cheap joke. Yeah. It's a cheap joke because we're saying like, oh, isn't it funny that Randy is an older like gentleman and he is saying the same thing as Tina, who's 13 years old, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the idea that she would even consider Randy is like, really creepy so no not a fan her story is cute i do like this idea that she's trying on like a different personality a little bit Mm -hmm. but that it's so close to who she is as a person too that it's almost indistinguishable like the same she uses the exact same voice yeah it's just it's cute she moves her hair clip to the other side Mm -hmm. she's just trying to be a little bit spicier you know But then she realizes, ooh, I got a little too spicy this episode. Mm -hmm. And I like that Randy's advice in this episode is actually really solid. He even helps Bob once he gets his truck by telling him about Chowster and about the food festival. He's very helpful. Yeah. Everything bad that happens in this episode is actually a result of Linda and the kids. Like, Gene blows up the truck the first time. Linda knocks off everyone's mirrors. And then Tina and Louise get Bob in trouble. So... Bob and Randy are pretty blameless. Yeah, for sure. Randy did tell Bob to get the food truck, which is a good idea. And it was a great way to get some extra money. And Bob was successful at it. He had some good lineups. And Randy pointed that out. And if Bob didn't have his... Family along with him? Yeah, then he'd probably be a bit more successful. But we wouldn't have an episode. So, yeah. So Gene frustrates you in this episode obviously he blew up the truck and i oh every single time that happens i go no gene (laughs) no yeah it is pretty frustrating that like right as they're saying it he's going to touch it and you're like oh no 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 did you not listen you didn't hear and then randy again not listening when bob says no like hey guys just a tip if there's a big red button somewhere anywhere don't touch it. Just don't. It's like a movie rule. You know, don't touch the button. I think that is a TV trope. Big red button. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, Bob should have had it under like a glass case or something like that. <laughs> you know, that said, do not touch. You will blow stuff up. <laughs> now talking about Gene, um, he actually is fairly innocent in this episode. Because Other than he the blowing up. Yeah, right. He doesn't do anything maliciously. Mm-mm. He doesn't even blow up the van maliciously. No. He he doesn't even blow up the truck maliciously. He doesn't lie to the customers saying that it's grass-fed meat or bison or whatever. Soy bison, which makes no sense. Exactly. He, with Louise doing the Chowster updates, he even tells her, like, I didn't say that, like, mm-hmm. when she's doing the updates. So he actually is pretty innocent in this whole thing. Oh, yeah. No, no bad intentions there, right. for sure. And everybody else is... Knows exactly what they're doing. Linda knows what she's doing. Louise knows she's writing false reviews. And mm-hmm. Tina knows she's lying to people. Yeah. Girls, you're looking bad this episode. Yep. All the guys are beating you, morally speaking. Yep. 
The mob flips the truck, and the Belchers all blame each other for their situation. They wait until nightfall, then make their escape. Randy accidentally blows up Bob's truck, and everybody is forced to walk home. We end the episode with Teddy looking out of his truck wistfully at the restaurant, hoping that Bob will be back soon. Poor Teddy, he's nothing without Bob's burgers. Aww. So the final part of this episode is very zombie movie-esque. Oh, huh. I didn't think about that. So when you see the overhead shot of the truck and all of the mob circling around it and closing in on it, it's very much like Dawn of the Dead or, you know. Yeah, The Walking Dead. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And even the the point of view shot they have of one of the hipsters running at the truck is with their arms out and... Wow, I never made that connection. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. That is the feeling you get in this episode. They're trapped in the truck and they're they got to wait out the zombie mob and oh yeah cool i didn't like it no (laughs) i mean it it just felt very it turned too quickly what type of episode it was Mm -hmm. it changed very quickly i think i don't know what did you think it escalated very quickly for sure for sure i didn't mind it though it was kind of funny like the idea that people would get mad at them and they'd have to hide in their truck but then as soon as the mob starts actually like flipping the truck over and then camping out to wait out the the belchers like it gets to be a bit much it's like i know you're upset but it seems like you probably would have cooled down Mm -hmm. and not only that but can't bob contact the police couldn't some sort of punishment come on these people because of what they're doing a festival usually has security Yeah, you would think so, right? (laughs) And there seems to be no security. So it's a little, it's escalated, let's just say. Mm -hmm. It's it's a heightened experience, but I don't mind it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny. So it works overall. We actually see a brief, very brief moment where Louise doesn't have her hat on. Mm -hmm. We don't see Louise, of course. We just see the hat on her feet as she's upside down after the truck flips over. But you know it's not glued to her head. It does come off. It does come off. I look forward to the day that we will see Louise without a hat. I think it'll happen maybe once, maybe. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be like, oh, okay. So if it happens like in South Park with Kenny, you never see him out of his snowsuit. Mm -hmm. But when you do see him out of his snowsuit, you don't even realize it. I'm not talking about the movie here. Scratch the movie. It's not canon for me. Well, no, it totally is. But that's an exception. Every other time in the show, you see him without his snowsuit on you either don't realize it's him Mm. or there's some clever trickery going on okay so i think they should do the same with louise right so either we don't realize she doesn't have her hat on or they replace it or something else yeah i think that would be fun Mm -hmm. it would just be a nice little moment i guess i'm assuming that her hair looks just Just normal anyway right but it'll be bizarre for sure um, another little part that we didn't mention earlier that I think the two of us really love is when Jean ends up being right about Tabitha Johansson's song. <laughs> she sings it and that song just makes me laugh every time. Every single time. Whenever it comes up on the Bob's Burgers soundtrack, when we're listening to it in the car, or I'm just listening to it around the house. I I love it. I think it's so funny. Megan Mullally does like a great like breathy oh. sexy kind of voice you yeah. know but then she's talking about an oil spill so it just doesn't really work um <laughs> it's so gross but so yeah. funny and so not subtle yeah and of course bob is like well well how would you know that gene that doesn't make any sense well it's not subtle and then bob immediately agrees with him as soon as he hears a song so yeah it's a good moment for sure so tabitha is loosely based on another character really or a She's loosely based on a singer. Really? Her look and her style. Okay. Named Tori Amos. She's also a piano player. Oh. I think I've heard some of her songs before, but I couldn't tell you what they are. Red frizzy hair. Sometimes it's straight. But the way she sits on her piano bench is identical to what Tabitha does. She kind of like half sits on it and like straddles it a little bit. And it's really weird. Um, and some of her vocals are similar, breathy, but they're not quite the same level mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. content. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the visual appearance and mannerisms 
very similar. Interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. I didn't know that until about an hour ago. So, hmm. yeah. Cool. So, overall, do you like this episode? Meh. There's okay. there's aspects, there's moments that I really like in it, but like I I love Linda Jennifer Slope has Okay, that's like one of my favorite lines. I totally forgot about that too. That's so good. <laughs> I've definitely yelled that in the car before. Yes, she definitely has. <laughs> Driving Miss Crazy, pick a lane. Yep. Um, I love a lot of these lines and moments and Tabitha and oil spill and the episode as a whole. Eh, it's kind of a mess for me. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I really, I'm really on board with the episode pretty much until the point where the mob gets there. And then it just kind of declines. Right. And there's still some good parts after that, but it's just going in a different direction i do like the quiet game at the end when they're walking home okay yeah, i think that's, that's nice. great with randy like oh i'm really good at this game like oh you made a big mistake <laughs> you're uh, losing right now <laughs> <laughs> did your mom ever used to make you play the quiet game no i played the quiet game without even knowing it was a game oh you were just quiet i was just quiet <laughs> I know, but that makes it sound really, like, sad. Yeah. You're like, I didn't know it was a game. I just played it on my own anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. Aw. Um, all right. So, shall we get to our burgers of the week? Sure. Um, just to throw that out there, I only have one this week. And I have three. <laughs> so, at least it's not going to be too hard to decide who wins. Well, you never know. Maybe your one burger is fantastic, Jason. Do not doubt yourself. Maybe Believe in you. Maybe it's flantastic. Oh, no. If it's another flan burger, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> Except I actually do like your like flan the, show. <laughs> there's a flan food truck in this episode. I Genghis know. Flan. Genghis Flan. Wait, we're saying it wrong then. It's Doesn't, flan, I don't care. not flan. I don't care. Okay. Regardless, before we get to our burgers of the week, I do want to do some of our burgers for our iTunes reviewers out there. Oh, thank you guys. Yes, thank you so much for your reviews. So we got a review from Other Blue Girl, and I know her as Sarah on Twitter. And I know that she is a big fan of Sherlock Holmes and a lot of other great British stuff. Mm. So I made up the name Sherlock's Escapes burger oh that's cute yeah <laughs> so it's kind of a play on jason's crepe burger from a few episodes ago so it would be just a burger wrapped up in a crepe so hopefully you like that one and our second burger is for mad max mom who is one of our faithful burger of the week listeners and also listens to our forking bullshit podcast Ooh, good place podcast which we just recorded episode 13 for the finale of season one and her burger is the Mad Max Curry Road Burger. Oh, nice. I yeah. like it. And it would be a Malaysian Indian curry spiced beef burger. I found this one online. Sounds delicious. <laughs> yep. Um, Ooh, you should put some peas on there too. Why? Because peas are delicious and Witness curry. peas? <laughs> no. <laughs> Witness peas. <laughs> no, just because peas are really good in curry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, with witness peas, we'll just say that. <laughs> I will put the link to that particular burger in our show notes. Thank you again for your reviews. They mean the world to us. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get to our burgers of the week. All right. You can go first. Okay. My first burger is the It's Nut Subtle Burger. <laughs> I was totally going to have like, <laughs> okay, I was going to have a not so subtle burger. <laughs> This is, this would be a vegan patty made with walnuts and lentils, served with avocado ranch dressing, lettuce, tomatoes, red onion, and melted cashew cheese. I found this recipe online, and I will put it in the show notes. Gross. Hey, <laughs> don't be mean. <laughs> don't be sassy. So yeah, it's nut subtle. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I think it's cute. <laughs> Mine was going to be, there's nothing subtle or crowded, and I was oh, just going to have sauerkraut. sauerkraut? Yeah. That's cute. But I... I bailed on that idea. Oh, okay. Um, my burger was driving Miss Dandy, and it was going to be dandelion leaves on the burger. I, was lettuce. I thought dandelion leaves were like a yucky thing. They're you know? t very tarty and oh. uh, a little sour. D wait, what was the name of it again? Driving Miss Dandy. Driving Miss Dandy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's cute. I had two others. Um, One was a play on... Coachella, so it's the Coach 
Chala burger. So it would be a beef patty with an over easy egg and Stilton cheese just served on a Chala bun. Chala? What's Chala? I, I hope I'm saying this right. Guys, I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, Chala is a special Jewish ceremonial bread usually eaten on the Sabbath and or Jewish holidays. It's typically braided and it's like brushed with egg. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never had it before, but it looks good. I mm. would try it okay. for sure. Cool. And then my last one was the truck slop burger. <laughs> <laughs> like the truck stop. Gross. <laughs> I know. It sounds disgusting. Is it like a sloppy joe? It's a, ex- exactly that. Yeah. It's a sloppy joe. Nice. Yeah. So that's my burgers. <laughs> I think <laughs> Truck slop. Truck slop? That's the winning one? No. No? Oh, come on. It's I a like pretty it. good one. All right. So which one wins in your mind, Jason? Um, I like the first and second one. Or the nut subtle and the driving Miss Dandy. Uh, I guess I'll stick with the it's not so subtle. All right. So do you want to rock, paper, scissors for it or no? No, it's fine. Okay. Not feeling that proud of yours? Well, I just. I, okay. I'll let you have this one. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for allowing me to have it. What a gracious person you are. I'm a are. gracious host. You are. You truly are. I let you into my house. <laughs> what? We live here together. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of Burger of the Week, a multiverse radio production. Thank you so much for listening. If you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. We would really appreciate it. And we'll give you a punny burger name mm-hmm. to go with your review. We will. If you have any comments or a punny burger name you'd like to share with us, you can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. You can also visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. And we'll see you next week for our review of Season 2, Episode 6, Dr. Yap. Oh, what a fun episode that is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Lots of great Gale moments. Yes. Love Gale episodes. Most Mm -hmm. of them. Most of them. Most of them. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you next week. Bye.